You know what? I think we got Ken Daniels right now live from Montreal. Ken Daniels, television play-by-play -play voice of the Detroit Red Wings on Bally Sports Detroit in Montreal tonight for the call of the final regular season game. Ken, how are you, my friend? Anxious. You? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm telling you, Ken. And first of all, before tonight, I just I, I have to say thank you. I spent 30 minutes this morning going back and listening to these calls again. It just makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. It was fun to be in a situation like that again. How much fun was it for you as a broadcaster? It wasn't until JT Comfer got the second goal in the second period to make it 4-2. to two. It wasn't a lot of fun. <laughs> but uh, at that point, yeah. At that point, yeah, you just uh, live in the moment. Those are calls when you leave the building, and I happened to walk out with Steve Eisenman leaving, leaving last night when I left the gondola as we headed to the airport, and I saw Steve, and we're walking out, and he said, well, how did it sound? And I said, I have no idea. I don't even know what the hell I said. <laughs> so you, <laughs> you're in the moment. You're living it. You're trying to rise above the crowd, and that's why, you know, when they score – a goal on the road, although even in, in Toronto, uh, they had plenty of fans there. You just try to meet the crowd or rise above it, but it was deafening at Little Caesars. And that's what I think I was most happy about, just the crowd, the enjoyment, the anticipation, and the players. And it's such a tight-knit group. Um, it was uh, just wonderful to be a part of it. So, so very, very exciting, and you just try not to ruin the moment. Ken, you talk about the crowd and the fans at Little, Caesar, uh, Little Caesars Arena. Maz was saying how he was standing up in front of his television <laughs> watching the end of the game. I was standing up in front of my television. My wife was like, get away, like back away. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can't yeah. breathe in these situations. Ooh. To be able to feel that again, it just you just want more of it. Um, how You use the word anxious. How anxious are you for tonight? What is left in the tank, do you believe, for the Red Wings players after last night oh I think lots I, I think they're thriving on it and and that's why you know when when Steve a year ago said Ottawa and Buffalo is ahead in the rebuild and he tried to uh, mitigate that by signing the veteran players that he did already had some obviously but then you add JT Copper who comes up with huge goals you already had David Braun and then you add Patrick Kane oh my goodness he's got seven game winners to lead the team and he's only playing in his 50th game of the season even that's remarkable when you think what Patrick did so I know the guys look around that room and, and if you're a younger player and you're Lucas Raymond or Mo Sider and you look up and you see Patrick Kane and Comfer and Dylan Larkin who's just driving this team. I mean, they went 4-10 and 10 without Dylan and the, and, the, and the losing streak that they hit. They shouldn't even be in this position really right. because they had it locked up. But injuries happen. They're part of the game and they're not that deep in terms of an elite center who can feed his wingers. And that's why Dylan Larkin's, Larkin's absence becomes more key to the group. They're a good team, not a great team. They've got depth, but not that elite depth. So I think those young guys look in that room and see the veteran guys who are there who can calm it down. Um, and David Perron's a big voice in the room and Kane. So I think they're fine. I think they've got a lot left in the tank. And obviously, it depends how James Reimer comes through tonight. He's done it before. He's uh, done it in Toronto, went into Calgary, shut him out, not playing a lot. So you just hope he comes up with a big game tonight. It still always comes down to goaltending. I believe I believe that Keith Primo's kid, Caden, is playing goal tonight for Montreal. Mm. And I'm thinking, isn't that something? you got Lucas Raymond, and we're going to mention this off the top of the broadcast, Lucas Raymond, who got taken fourth. That's the highest draft pick the Red Wings have had since Keith Primo's daddy. Wow. wow. He's taken at number three. Wow. And now his kid's playing goal tonight. So I think that's pretty cool. There are stories within the game, but even tonight, you just stick to the game. Plenty of stories, and hopefully the Red Wings write a great one. Ken Braylon Edwards here. I hope you heard what we said before you got on, man. We're very lucky in the city of Detroit to have you, Ken Calvert, as well as Dan Miller and Dan Dickerson, man. We're just a very blessed fan base, sports city. Um, long, long, long time fan of the Detroit White Wings. Excited, you know, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows. But here they are. They got you back on the edge of your seats. They can get in 100%. We were just talking about Florida losing a couple years ago as a number one seed. We were talking about the Bruins losing as a number one seed. The Red Wings get in. They're starting to play that type of hockey that we saw, well, say five weeks ago. Do they really have a chance once they get in? Because I'm starting to like what I'm seeing, whether it's the Canadians or not. Well, I like the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm putting it I, out there, Ken. Let, let's. Let's win a game against the President's Trophy champion New York Rangers, okay? They'll yeah. likely start in New York on Sunday. 
uh, is the way that that would go because the Knicks play in New York on Saturday afternoon. So let's get there first. Let's hope it's not just one point tonight and a, and a Washington loss, and then you're waiting on Pittsburgh and the Islanders tomorrow because the Islanders, without Noah Dobson, they're going to rest some players, and Pittsburgh then would still be alive. And you know what my biggest fear is tonight? And, yeah, you try to get in, and I'm not even looking ahead to what they can or can't do. And you know what? If a goalie gets hot, sure, maybe you, you take a series somewhere, and that's what it boils down to. My biggest fear tonight is that uh, the Red Wings are winning. Uh, it's not a fear. It's a great thing. If the Red Wings are winning uh, over Montreal and you've got the Philadelphia Flyers who need a regulation win against Washington, whom the Red Wings need to lose tonight, the Red Wings need Washington to lose, and it's tied late in regulation, and the Philadelphia Flyers who need a regulation win to stay alive pull, the, pull their goaltender. Oh, yeah. And the Washington Capitals and Alexander Ovechkin are staring at an empty net for four minutes to get a win. That would really piss me off. Oh, my gosh. I did not consider that. (laughs) No, we've got all the scenarios, and that that is one that could come down. So, you know, we'll keep track in the Valley Bar. We'll have the the Washington-Philadelphia score there. But, sure, these are all scenarios that you have to think of. But you know what? When you look back... Um, the Red Wings are in this position because, and all these teams are in this position, and you can go back to games that blow in leads that you have. I, I always think back to the 4 nothing lead over San Jose, and you lose to them in overtime. How big would another point look in that game? You lose two to Arizona here and there. You lose in your building to Anaheim. So you fight, you, you know, you lost a 4 nothing lead uh, to the worst team in the National Hockey League, who's, I don't know, minus 100 in the goal differential. So that one hurts. But that's revisionist history. You just have to take care of your business tonight. You win the game, and you hope you get some help out of town. All these teams that, and the Flyers are in the same boat, Pittsburgh in the same boat. You're not controlling your destiny. The Washington Capitals are the one team who control their destiny. They win, they're in, regardless of what anyone else does. Hey, Kenny, it's Maz. Thanks again for coming on with us. Just before you mentioned that empty net stat, Ryan asked something at the beginning of the show, and he said, what are the odds? And I don't know if you even have a stat on this. When a team pulls their goalie, what are the uh, how many? What is the percentage of empty net goals versus game tying goals or game winning goals? Not a clue. I I ninety percent. Ninety percent empty net. Oh, empty net over yeah. over a tying yeah. over a tying goal. Um, I don't know if it would be that high. I don't know where the skill level is today. Um, I'm not in the way the goaltending is today where save percentages are no longer 915. You're, you're at yeah. 90, yeah. 905 is like a medium for the National Hockey League. So I don't know. Um, I could have our stats people, Matt, look it up and, and, and see. Thanks, uh, we, 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 can go, we can go to our folks. Maybe they'll figure it out percentage but that's not a that's not a bad one to have tonight if we uh yeah. you know and we will get word because obviously our crew's keeping an eye on the game or what are the chances of a tying goal to yeah okay that's you know I what because it. you know we always say and here's one we, we, we i've mentioned a few times over the years where you think you know a team gets a power play there's a penalty at the end of the period right and you're yep. continuing on to the next period and we always say well you got fresh ice with which to work on the power play the percentage chance that you score in a carryover penalty to the next period is less than you'd score if the power play continued in the period. I bet. It's a greater penalty kill because the teams go in there, they adjust. You know, there's a special team penalty killing too. They adjust to how the other power play is going to be. They're rested. They come out there. They have their game plan too. The carryover, even though the ice is all nice and smooth, doesn't (laughs) benefit necessarily a team to score on the power play when people think it would. It doesn't. So I'll check that stat. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. I'll I'll wait for that stat tonight uh, on on the broadcast. (laughs) Maybe Mickey uh, can give me the answer. Oh, only if it's pertinent and we work it in and there's an empty net, heaven forbid, right, and the Flyers pull it. I don't even want to get into that scenario where I have I'm to use you. it. So you can text me in a few days. I'll let you know. <laughs> you bet, man. You bet. Hey, uh, you know, Darren McCarty works with us here, and he's, matter of fact, getting his hair cut behind us. And he wanted me to mention to you, he met you in the gondola uh, a couple of nights ago. Yeah. And he says last he is, night. He, night. yeah, he said he is the reason that uh, the Red Wings are in this position right now because he gave that extra, that extra good prayers, I guess, for him. Of course he did. We hugged one another, and I said, yeah, 
and we talked about nerves in a game. And I, you know, I mean, Darren's been in the big games where you have to control your nerves. Me, I'm just watching what happens below me. You can get nervous, but I have no bearing on the game. Darren actually had a bearing on the game. So, yeah, he knows what those situations were like, but I could see as happy as he was, he was a little little nervous for the guys because you can't control it on your own, just like we can't. We're, you know, we're at, uh, we're at their mercy, but uh, good thing those guys uh, can control theirs and come through. And again, that's where it comes back to the guys who've been there before. And this isn't a young team. And, you know, the Red Wings through what they're doing here in the rebuild and older guys fall off, but hopefully the young guys learn from these guys. And that's where that presence comes through for years to come. Hey, Ken, you know, when I'm the Red Wings took a step back, let's say over the last five weeks, <clears throat> well, five weeks ago, uh, Alex DeBrinket is a guy that didn't necessarily step up when uh, uh, Dylan Larkin went down. And we all have slumps. Like I had him in football. I went through stretches where I dropped passes, just couldn't figure it out. But in the last five games, it seemed like it's going very well for Alex Brinkett. Last night, five shots on goal, uh, a goal, uh, three assists. Like, what's changed for Alex Brinkett? Because he's a major part of what the Red Wings are trying to do as it relates to win games and get into the playoffs. What's changed for him in the last five games? He's playing a lot, a lot better. Well, it's just squeezing the stick too tight. And for a big part of it, when he went, I don't know, was it one in 19 or something yeah. and hadn't scored in, in a dozen games or something like that. But, you know, again, Dylan Larkin had missed some of that time too. So as I spoke of earlier, you know, Comfer and Cop are fine players, but they're not driving the line offensively. So all of a sudden, you don't have the matchups. You go on the mm-hmm. road. You can shut down uh, Debrinket. Uh, and when they played Debrinket and Kane together with Comfer, now they're shutting them down. Hopefully it opens up Lucas Raymond. But other teams have matchups too. And, and you're just Very not true. getting the opportunities. And, he'd, you know, he'd, he'd hit some goal posts. He just missed nets. It happened to him last year in Ottawa too. Um, when he scored 27, so he's met that and roughly the, the same number of points and, and exceeded that this year with 67. Should, we said at the start of the year, should he be a 41 goal scorer like he did twice with Chicago? Not necessarily, but if he didn't score 30, would it be a disappointing season for him? Yes. Um, if he had a big night tonight, he could still get there. He's got 27, yeah. but he'll tell you he's not where he should be considering it's something like seven his first nine. But he was probably just pressing too tight. Things go well sometimes. But once he gets one, as he's done now, um, he can find it. And, you know, he's got three goals the past three, and he's got 13 points the past 13. So it's not like he's been non-existent, but he's a goal scorer. And they're going to run through slumps, except those who are exceptionally elite. And some have it. I mean, Stamkos has done it. Ovechkin, the start of the year, we thought he was finished. We thought Alexander Ovechkin was finished. There's no way he's going to catch Gretzky. Well, you know what? He may not have scored for half the season, but uh, didn't he ever come back after that? Even Tyler Bertuzzi went like one in 32 games, yeah. and now he's got 15 in his past 26. So, guys, you just you just feel a roll sometimes. You get a different line. You start to click. So I'm not worried about the, the brinket. I think he's probably going to be close to a 30-goal score. Hey, Ken, that's, that's, that's good. Ken, Ken, last one for you. And speaking of a 30-goal score, Lucas Raymond last night, 30 and 31, 40 assists this year. He's 22 years old. You had mentioned highest Red Wings draft pick since Keith Primo. Um, did the Red Wings – have the Red Wings found their star, that guy – Everybody talks about having a guy on your team. Is he that for this team? 100%. Yep. And he's going to get paid. He's going to get paid. And I don't know what Steve was thinking. You know, you don't want to go bridge now what he's done. Boy, you want to lock him up as long as you can. And I don't know what that number is because I haven't gone through all the comparables, but him and Cider. uh, Yeah, what he's had, he's pulled the Red Wings through. I mean, 10 points the past five games, 20 points and 14 goals the past 17. He's a star, and he works so hard in the offseason. He doesn't lose the puck battles like he used to. The story's been told. He had to get stronger, and he did, and nothing phases this guy. And in big moments like he was in Sweden and in junior and when the Red Wings and Chris Draper were scouting him, this guy just comes up big in big games. And you can just see how he's fighting through now and finding pucks, and he'll make moves where defenders are going, what did he just do? So, you know, when the Red Wings took him fourth and Tim Stutzla probably would have been their guy if he were available because Stutzla's a center. And you thought, you know, when Ottawa grabbed him one pick in front, you thought, boy, I don't know. If you had to do a redraft, where would Raymond be? Uh, Lafreniere and Stutzla. I don't – it's a it's a tough call, but he is a legitimate star. There's no doubt about it. And uh, right now he's leading the Wings with 71 points, uh, three up on Dylan. Um, he would be the first winger uh, to lead the Red Wings in points since Sergei Fedorov. Oh, incredible. In a full, in a full it's season. a name. 
Incredible. Yeah, so, oh, no, I'm sorry. Not Fedorov. I'm sorry. First winger, I'm sorry. Let me correct that. First winger since Shanahan. We all know Fedorov's the center. First winger since Shanahan in 02 to lead the Red Wings in points. So that's how long it's been where Fedorov and others down the middle. Yeah, where others, Fedorov and others down the middle were leading and Larkin and Zetterberg and Datsuk, et cetera. But yeah, going back to what Brendan Shanahan did in 02, um, Lucas Raymond is a legitimate star. Great to see him just, just turn 22. Amazing. Hey, Kenny, last second here. Who's your Stanley Cup final? Take the Red Wings out of it for now. Who's your Stanley Cup oh, final? Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> want, me take, to, want to take the Red Wings out of it since they're not even in it yet? Okay. Yeah, take the Red Wings out of it right now. Uh, who, who do you like in the final? Who's going to win it? Oh, boy, it's a tough call. Um, uh, I do like either Carolina or the Rangers uh, okay. in the East. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the West, it can all come down to goaltending, can it? Yeah, um, of course. I, you know, I like that. Da- I like Dallas. Wow, um, I like Dallas. That's what D Max said. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Max said. Hey, to me, if it's not Dallas, would I root for Ken Holland in his final season? Oh, I know yeah. people like to take shots at him, but we I love him. Love Ken, love Ken and, Holland. Uh, yeah, I love him too. And it's people a great can manager. take shots all they want. That's okay. He's a great manager. You bet. He's a great person. And I remember when he signed Zach Hyman, people went, what the hell are you doing? Well, he's nearly got a 60-goal score there. At <laughs> wow. Five million. So, you know, uh, it's probably the greatest free agent signing, uh, certainly in the history of the Oilers and uh, maybe overall anywhere. And, yeah, you've got your stars in McDavid and Drysaddle, obviously, but you still have to round it out. Um, so I, I, I'm rooting for Edmonton, but realistically, I think Dallas, um, and it's a tough call between Carolina and the Rangers. All right. All right. I love it. The great Ken Daniels. Thanks, Ken. Ken, thanks so much for the time, my friend. We really appreciate it. Enjoy the game tonight. Back to work, Ken. Thanks, guys. Thank you, <laughs> my God. pleasure. Thanks for the distraction. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. We'll be watching tonight you on bet. Valley Sports Detroit. Thanks. Ken Daniels will have the call. Say out of you Absolutely. Bet, Absolutely. Out of you got we'll, it. We'll do. And we're on, by the way, by the way, we're on TV 20 as well. T- oh, that's nice. right. You that's know what? I, I, I actually okay. I actually watched that last night on TV 20 wow. because it was um, it, it was closer to I was going back yeah. and forth with a couple of channels. So it was, I liked closer. it on 235 uh, there you go. TV 20. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much <laughs> again. Go. Good call by you. My pleasure, guys. All right. You got it. Yeah. Um, so Bye. two ways to watch the wings tonight. TV 20 and of course, Valley Sports. Ray Lincoln. Lincoln.